Bam! Hello! Hey everybody! My name is Mr. B. You are perfection and we are in the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. Happy Friday! It's May! May 1st! Woo! So, happy Friday, happy May. Uh, today is going to be a theater workshop with a focus on scene writing. Pat, pat. Before you shut the lid and say, Mr. B, I'm still in school. I don't want to write more. Listen up, my dear child. Before we write a play, we need to play. So we're going to do a lot of really fun brainstorming together. And somehow, you and me, we're going to write a scene together. Yes. I'm sure it's been done before, but not in my memory. So it's the first time. Um, adults, I'm going to need you especially today because if we're gonna share some ideas, we gotta answer some questions together. So my dear friend Curtis is now going to bring up a beautiful set of questions somewhere in this vicinity. Magic. Uh, and my adults, I would like you to hop on the keys and uh, ask your little learners, your little artists and residents and get them to, to pipe in too and tell me, um. Hmm. Number one, where is an interesting location for a scene to take place? Now, let's be specific because you might say Texas is the best. Fantastic, but Texas is a big place. If you said my grandmother's haunted attic, hmm, now that's very specific. And that really gives us something we might sink our teeth into. So uh, be specific, thinking about what is an interesting place for a scene, uh, an interesting location for a scene to be in. Hmm? That's number one. Uh, number two, what's a good line for a scene? It can be an opening line, it can be a closing line, it can be a middle line, anything. And again, uh, well, I didn't say this yet, so, but I say it now, don't think too hard about this. Today's a workshop, so we're really just kind of throwing stuff against the wall and sees what sticks, so don't think too hard. What's a good line for a scene? That clock just winked at me. That's a good scene. <laughs> I really wanna know that scene now. That clock just winked at me. Hey. Okay, that's number two. Number uh, three, who are some interesting character or character types that you might have in a scene? Now, before you say Spider-Man is the best, he is, but he's been created before. So let's just think original characters. You can give me professions, uh, maybe an adjective about them. So you might say like uh, a beautiful tax collector. <laughs> Don't know why. Maybe they get more money because they're more beautiful and that's not fair. Anyway, so maybe a description, a profession, uh, whatever it may be. So my adults in the room, please pull your artists and residents and get some input for an interesting location for a scene to take place in. A good line for a scene, opening line, closing line, middle line, doesn't matter. Don't think too hard. And then uh, who are some interesting characters or character types that you might find in a scene? Okay, so I'm gonna go set up my comments while you're doing that. And then we are going to talk, did that work? I think it worked. Uh, we're gonna talk materials. Usually for the theater workshops, there's a secret ingredient. Mm -mm. No chopsticks, no talking spoons, no proper boxes, pen, paper, and your noggin, your noodle, your amazing imagination. That's all we need today. So as I've mentioned, if you have a journal that you write in, like mine, that's great. Or if you don't have a notebook, you can just use a piece of paper, that is fine, and a writing instrument, a pen or pencil. I guess if you have a crayon or colored pencil too, that's cool. Just something that you can write in. Okay, so let me go check out my, Laurel says a character, a teacher. What a great way to start. Shout out to all my teachers out there. We miss you and thank you for doing what you do. Thumbs up. Okay, so teacher, that's a great suggestion. I'm gonna write that up on my wall of suggestions and my other adults in the room, feel free to pipe in on these questions here, wherever they may be. A teacher is a great, great character. All right, here we go. How do I let, oh, okay. And then, uh, yes, yeah, so you're getting your pen and your paper or your notebook and there we go. Okay. I'm getting little heart emojis. A gas station in the Oklahoma panhandle. You ask for specific and you get specific. I think we have some writers in the room. Oh, and that's another thing. Even if we are not a writer, fear not. We're not looking for professional writers in here. This is a writer's workshop where everybody's ideas are necessary and needed. So hold on. Gas station? Yeah, gas station in Oklahoma. All right, up on my wall. 
Thank you. Oh, a sea captain. Oh my stars. All right. So you're gonna keep coming in with these conversations, with these questions throughout. Just keep piping in if you're just coming in. We're answering some questions because we're gonna be working on writing a scene together. This is so exciting. This is new for me. <laughs> you're saying, Mr. B, this gets done every Thursday on TikTok. You're so old. Don't you know anything? Well, it's new for me. All right. We're talking about materials. Ah. If you are just joining us for the first time and you're alarmed, don't be, this is fun. Uh, I'm Mr. B and I'm a teaching artist at Lincoln Center Education. And every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 2 p.m. there's a live experiential art making workshop here. Uh, we've done sculptures with, uh, and it's all different teaching artists. We've done sculptures, we've done singing, we've done dance, uh, we've played instruments, we've sang, we did characters, puppets, bookmaking, paper weaving. Lots of great stuff. So every Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. If you miss those videos, they all live here on the Facebook page. I'm <laughs> so amazed by that. So you can always come and watch one of our videos. And last but not least, and then we'll get to the good stuff. If you think, oh, Johnny loves to write scenes, I'm gonna uh, send that to his parents. Adults, feel free to share this with other parents or teachers or groups that you think might enjoy these workshops. We have a blast making them and we wanna share them. So we hope you're having fun too. Okay, <laughs> did somebody say a crab? <laughs> oh, Gia, that's a good one. I like that. We have a crab. Do you mean a literal crab? Or like a crab, like me, Mr. B. <laughs> oh, and then the elevator doors closed. Good line, excellent. Oh, we're popping, we're cooking with gas. My little pea brain is running around all excited. Okay, agenda. Uh, first, we are going to do a quick warm up because actors, like, um, athletes, right? We got to warm things up, our faces, bodies, and imaginations. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the four P's of scene writing. No, three. Let's say four P's of scene writing. We're going to talk about people, places, problems, and solutions. If anybody knows a P word for a solution, possibilities. Oh, that's so good. Four P's. People, place, problem, and possibilities. Oh, that's great. That made my Friday. So we're gonna do those four things. Uh, then we're gonna talk about improvisation, how we can do that to help write dialogue, what our characters are saying to each other. Uh, and then we're gonna go next steps. How can these scenes get performed? Oh boy, it's not my birthday, but I'm hoping that you can send them to me when they're done. And then next time I'm live, I can read some scripts out loud because that would just be a gas. Okay, so um, let us check back in. More? You're kidding me. Good, Dan. I love these. Oh my gosh, this is so great. Okay. Um, so why don't we do this? Let's do our warm up. Uh, my adults, I encourage you to join in because it's Friday. Burn some calories for the day, the week, month, whatever. Get on up. Find yourself a bubble in your room. And by that, I mean you can extend your arms. Oh, I cut my thumb. Hello. I made it nice. Uh, so you can extend your arms and not touch anything. As we have discussed ad nauseum, which means a lot, Mr. B is too tall for his office. So if he does a full bubble, he knocks everything over and then he does a half bubble. Okay, bueno. So uh, go ahead and make sure that you've got a little space. You can cha-cha-cha and move around. Good, good, good. And since it's May, let's do the May March. What does that mean? It means we're gonna march in place. The May March. My senior friend, you can do the May move. Give me a little shoulder action. Ooh, I have some music. Oh, that. Nice. All right. So we've got a nice little, <laughs> totally out of sync with the music. A May March going on. Good, good, good. Now, we know because we're smart actors that we can show who we are, where we're going, what we're feeling, uh, just using our faces and our bodies, right? So using our May March or our May Moon, uh, could you maybe show me that you walk like a very, very important business person. I own a 99% of this company. Oh, I don't know about you, my shoulders go back. I'm walking through my office, looking at the cubicles. And what do I say? What would they say? What does somebody who's really important say when they're walking through the office? That's that. Tuna on rye today. I, I obviously never worked in an office because I don't know what happens. But I feel very important. 3 p.m. Be in my office. 
Okay. And I know enough of that important business, man or woman. What are you doing your May March? How do you roll these cakes on that? That'd be funny. <laughs> it would break my neck. But it'd still be fun. All right. Who was it? Who said a crab? I don't know. Should we try it? How does the crab walk? That's a crabby crab. How does your crabby crab walk? <clears throat> And I'm back to May March. It's Friday. <laughs> All right. And what about a character type? How about a May March for ooh, a nosy person? What do you do with your eyes when you're a nosy person? <laughs> Eyes are looking everywhere and look with people. Mm. All right. Whoa. Whoa. Thank you, Curtis, for that. Delightful backup music. I'm going to take a sip of water. I exercise a lot. Mm -hmm. ah. All right. So, if you're just joining us and terribly confused, uh, today is a scene writing workshop. That's why we have these questions up here. Go ahead and answer them in the comments and we're gonna pull from them. Um, I'm gonna catch my breath. Um, one thing about when we're writing a scene, first of all, we have to sort of imagine what the place is and what's happening and who's there and all that jazz, right? So I've asked you for some locations in the ocean. Good, very good. Giant crabs would be fun, <laughs> but only imaginary ones. I agree. Giant! A real crab, says Gia. She clarified. Thank you. A real crab. I enjoy doing that crab. It felt good. Um, so we also want to think about being specific about details. So actually do this. Imagine that, let's say, you're in an airport. No more of this running nonsense. We're just walking through an airport. What are some things that you might see? Oh, and if you say, Mr. B, I've never been to an airport, all the better. Imagine, what do you think you might see in an airport? Oh, and Curtis, thank you. These questions, we're going to relieve them of their duty for the moment. Maybe we'll bring them back up in a wee. Magic. Um, so we're walking through an airport. What are some things that you might see? You can call them out right there. You can write them in the comments. I see a bunch of monitors with a bunch of numbers on them. I see a bunch of cards. I see a whole bunch of people. Excuse me. I see people running. Oh, I see a very fancy lounge. And right before the doors closed, I saw there was a piano player and a woman in a, a, a evening gown singing. I want to go in that lounge. They never let me in that lounge. Hmm. What else? What else might you see in an airport? Inter you might hear things too. Babies crying. That happens in an airport. <laughs> good, 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 good. Whip. All right, so let's do one more location. Let's say you're, uh, I don't know why, I'm feeling fancy. What about a fancy coffee shop? What are some details? If you walked into a fancy coffee shop, I hope you're standing. I hope you open that door and you hear that delicate little fancy tingle thing, the bell, <laughs> that's what it's called, a fancy tingle. What do you notice in the coffee shop? Oh, well, first of all, it smells like heaven. It smells like biscuits and coffee and deliciousness. You look in the pastry case, what do you see? I see the most gorgeous croissants, this big. The chairs are so small and uncomfortable. This is amazing. I purchased my $17 latte and it has a little image of me done in all the foam. This is a wonderful place. What a wonderful $17 spent. I don't know. So the point is, is that we're getting our imaginations revved up to think about details that tell us about where we might be. Sound good? All right. Throw me a thumbs up, my adults, if you are on board and you're not completely confused yet. Ha! All right. So let's do this. Um, let's talk about writing because I feel like when you say, let's write a scene, some people be, some people, some people are <laughs> good with language. Some people are like, yes, I have so many ideas in my head. I just can't wait to write it down. I've got the uh, place and the problem and all that stuff. Uh, so if that is you, 
I encourage you to get cracking right now. Maybe keep one ear open to the, to the lesson or to our workshop here, and you might get some extra ideas. But if you've got some ideas and you want to write a scene, get going, my friend. But stick around because I want to see you in a little bit. Um, if that's not you, though, and you go, a scene? I don't know. What can I write a, what can I write a scene about? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a fun little exercise together. So get your notebook or your paper. I think I'm going to use, well, first let me get out my notebook. I'm going to check in <gasps> making my delicious frappe. Yes, Nina, $20. Are you trying to up my latte with my self-portrait and foam? <laughs> oh, $3 extra. There we go. See Lincoln Center. You're on top of this. <laughs> Vivian says, yes, Concourse A in Atlanta. I don't know. It seems like it's a big airport. I think Atlanta has big airports. So cancellation. Oh, a house in Arlington. I'm brushing my teeth. Two sisters and dad? Yes, this is so good. Okay, so keep these comments coming. Focus, Mr. B. Grab your notebook, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a, I guess say four boxes or a quadrant, but it sounds so complicated. Just put a line down the middle and a line across. So make four boxes, just like that. I'm actually gonna do it on my clipboard. It'll be easier for me. Um, all right. <clears throat> Ah, this will not be a very good line. This will be a very crooked and wavy line. I'm forewarning you. Bam! Ah, I psyched it out. It's actually better than I thought. Um, and then I'm going to do one across. Magic. And that concludes our workshop today. No, Mr. B, get serious. Okay. So as you can see uh, behind me, we have this, I have these new signs. They say yes, yes, and yes. And then that says yes. And then that says yes too, because that's the theme of today. We are just saying yes. We're not saying no to any of our ideas. They might be stinkers. I mean, real stinkers. Doesn't matter. That's part of being a writer is you got to get everything out against the wall and you'll know what's good. You'll find those nuggets. You'll know when the stink bombs hit and you'll find those golden nuggets and you're going to keep those. Okay. So we're saying yes today. Bam. Up here, please write the word people. I'm going to change colors. Let's do purple. And people is spelled P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. People who need places. You thought I was going to say people. And then our next category is going to be place. Mm -hmm. Down here, what's our next thing we said? People, place, problem. People place, people place the problem. And then I was having, what did I, what did I say? I had solution, but I think that was vetoed with Scarfarella, if you were here last time for my trademark failure. The solution is gone. We're gonna say possibilities. Oh, do we know how to spell possibilities? P-O-S-S-I-B-I-L-I-T-I-E-S. I think that's right, my teachers in the building, I apologize if that's incorrect. But you want four grades, you want people, place, problem, and possibilities, all right? So that is our, uh, that's gonna be our sort of, um, what could this be like? Almost like a, a plate at a buffet. We're gonna load this up with goodness, and then we're gonna decide what we really like, okay? Let's start with people. So now you have no idea what to write a scene about. Here's what I'm gonna encourage you to do. I want you to go through this wonderful list of uh, suggestions that we've gotten now of different character types and choose two of them and put them here. So choose two characters and write them in the people box. Don't write them too big though, because you're gonna need to make some notes around them. Now, if you've got two in mind, great. And please don't think too hard. It's very important because if you try to like, oh, I'm gonna plan this out, yeah. It usually doesn't work out. So take a risk. Just go ahead and choose two characters that you think, you know what? That would be an interesting scene to put them together. All right, I'm going to scroll it all and look through. Oh, right, right. So we have teacher, a novice undertaker. That means somebody has, yeah, Whew, that's interesting. A sea captain, a crab. I still think a crab is so funny. <laughs> all right, giant, yes. Oh, good, good, good. Times Square, that's a good location. All right, so go ahead and choose your two characters. And again, if you don't pick them from the list, you can uh, just create them from your imagination. 
but make sure it's not Batman and Robin or Spider-Man or SpongeBob and Squidward or whoever it may be. We want to be original. So I'm gonna choose my two. A nun, interesting, Nina Wilson, I like that. What kind of nun? Nun. <laughs> what kind of nun? Spicy? Is she a spicy nun? Is she the coolest nun ever? No, that's up to you. All right, so I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose Sea Captain. And if you want, you can choose the same one as me. I can almost guarantee we're gonna go in different directions. I'm pretty sure we will. But if you wanna start with me, you totally can. I'm gonna do a C captain and a teacher. Why not? Those seem a little opposite enough. They're not too common. They're not too similar. Although I know some, I know some teachers who are like sea captains. God bless them. All right, sea captain and a teacher. So those are my two characters that I'm going to start with. All right, so I hope you have your two. If you want adults, pop them in the box. Let me know your two that you've got. I'm curious what combinations you're working with. Uh, next, let's go to a place. So again, go through the list, find a place. And again, you know what? This may be the stinkiest stinkaroo scene ever and it doesn't work. Doesn't matter. <laughs> say yes. Just say yes. Give it a go. Pull something out of thin air and uh, and we're, we're just gonna kind of build on it and see where it goes. Most of this. Okay. I am going to say, actually, I'm going to do an airport, Atlanta. Why not? I've never been to the Atlanta airport. I'm going to say that it's a, a huge airport. I don't know why. I just feel like Atlanta would have a big airport. So I'm going to say the Atlanta airport is my place. So I hope you have your two people and your one place. <laughs> Tilly the turtle and Willie the worm. Oh, Debbie, I expect that scene. I want it on my desk next week. I want to read that scene. All right, we're going to talk about that too, actually, how we can get these scenes to each other. Um, if, you're still, if you're still thinking about it, it's okay, but you can catch up in a second. Now what I want us to do is I want us to draw an arrow from our place to our problem. Draw an arrow as such. Now, I want you to brainstorm, what are some problems might happen in that location? I mean, this is really an airport. Nothing goes wrong in an airport. <laughs> what are some possibilities for problems in an airport? Hoy, oy, oy. I think someone's a cancellation, so I'm gonna write that down. And now you're just brainstorming. If your place is the fanciest coffee shop in the world, maybe the problems are the lattes are $20. The chairs are uncomfortable. Everyone whispers and points at you when you walk in the door. You used to date the manager and it's uncomfortable and it's your favorite place. I don't know. So anyway, what kind of problems does this place offer to you, the writer? So I'm gonna put canceled flights. And then I'm gonna say, oh, missing bags. Oof, I had that happen once. All my clothes gone. Rochester, New York. I haven't forgiven you. It's okay, actually, it was fine. Um, so missing bags, um, cancel flight, is it expensive. Everything's very expensive. Water is very expensive. Expensive water. I'm gonna be very specific. So I hope you're getting in there and you're getting your problems. Just brainstorming, throw it up on the wall, see what sticks. Uh, when I say expensive water, mm-hmm, talking to you. Um, what else happens in airports that's, that could be a problem? Super crowded. <laughs> this is riveting listening to me, right? <laughs> I hope you're riding along, my little riders. I hope you're filling in your boxes. And missing bags. <gasps> ding, ding, ding. All right. So here's what we're kind of doing. As we're doing this process, you might suddenly have a little lightning bolt in your little brain. You have a big brain. Your My little brain goes, boing. It goes, wait a minute. Bags? Sea captain and teacher? What if their bags were uh, uh, switched? <clears throat> so right there, I think I've decided on the problem that I want to focus on. I think there's something really interesting about a teacher and a sea captain getting their bags switched because I think they're going to have different bags. So now my little, my, oh, left my ID at home. Good for you. You're beautiful. The gate was changing. You didn't notice. <laughs> I love that. Yes, we're here. Look at round time A7. What? P26. <laughs> You've got 45 minutes to run. All right. Um, focus, Mr. P. Seriously now. Okay. So I decided that I'm going to do something with bags between my C and my teacher. They get mixed up. That is going to be my problem. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel, cancel flights. I'm going to cancel my expensive water and my super crowd. Uh, and I'm going to do 
Uh, missing bags is mixed up bag. Because that to me, there's just something about that. And now maybe you've got an idea for your problem that stems from here. Now I'm gonna flesh out my, my people a little bit. I really wanna make them opposite. So this sea captain, I want to say, first of all, to the National Sea Captains Alliance, I know there are so many nice sea captains out there, but this one is crusty, crunchy, crabby, etc. So this is a salty, crabby sea captain. Mm -hmm. Crab is the word of the day. Salty, crabby, keep salty, crabby sea captain. And then the teacher is going to be a, a kindergarten teacher. And why is that? This is the way my little pea brain works. I think a, a salty, crabby sea captain probably doesn't have very good manners. And my kindergarten teachers that I get to work with are the nicest, sweetest people in the world. And they're teaching our like little ones how to like behave in public and in crowds. And I don't know if a sea captain and a kindergarten, kindergarten, we'll do kindergarten teacher would necessarily get along so well. So right there, my, my bone, my funny bone is tickled. All right, so a kindergarten teacher. All right, so I hope you're popping in the comments. Let me know, do you have your people, your place and your problem? I hope so. And if not, take your time. We got time, it's Friday. Um, all right, salty crabby sea captain, kindergarten teacher, Atlanta, their bags get mixed up. Now, what are the possibilities from this problem? Maybe the giant crab from someone else's scene should be a part of the possible solution. Oh, maybe there's a giant crab in his suitcase. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so, and again, if you're if you're writing and you're like, Mr. B, you're too loud, you can mute me, but don't go away. You gotta come back. But you can do your own thing too. I don't want to distract you. But I love that idea. So when they open their suitcases, the, the pirate has like Play-Doh and Slinkies and toys, the most amazing toys ever. And then the 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 kindergarten teacher opens his and it's a giant crab. Yes, and, and eye patches. Do captains wear eye patches? That's pirates. I love the crab idea. So the possibility is uh, open their suitcases to find each other's stuff. Okay. Right, keep my eye on time. All right, open suitcases to find each other's stuff. Oh, and then the sea captain doesn't want to give it up. He does not. He play doh. Play doh. That's my play doh. Mm, salty. Salty play. It's my Play-Doh. Yes. <laughs> he tries to convince the security guard that it's his. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now I see, you know, I hope you see this is how we can kind of play. We can sort of think about these circumstances and then what other things come up? What other details make this scene funny or interesting? Their opposites, the problems. Um, and then if you want to start writing dialogue, well, and dialogue is what the, the characters say to each other. You can do what I just did. You can kind of just say something out loud. Mm. Play-Doh, that's my Play-Doh. And then the teacher at kinder, uh, Mr. Mr. Roberts. I think that's a very nice kindergarten teacher name. Mr. Roberts says, it's pronounced Play-Doh, and that's my bag, and we both know that. <gasps> Wait! The captain's name is Captain Roberts. They're both C. Roberts. It's Carl Roberts and Captain Roberts. They have the same name. Okay. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to be working on for the next week. And when I come back, I'm going to have a full scene uh, fleshed out. But before we go, I do want to uh, mention that uh, when now when you have some ideas, so I've got my captain and I've got my kindergarten teacher. They're both named C. Roberts, Captain Roberts and Carl Roberts. Switch suitcases. Oh, and the captain wants it, it's treasure. Oh. So then I have my Newsies cap here, put that on. So then if I wanna try and play around with the, the scene, I could do some improvisation. And improv is just saying whatever comes off the top of your, your head. So maybe I think, well, what would the first line of this scene be? Maybe <laughs> the captain is, is he's so poetic and he says, uh, man wasn't meant for the air, was meant for the sea. <laughs> and then behind it, so he goes, um, I'm so, excuse me, I'm, that's my bag. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, hi, 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 how you doing? 
taken. I'm proud of this. Great. So maybe that's my first line. Man, what I say? Man wasn't man wasn't meant for the air. He was meant for the sea. So he's having a very poetic moment by his conveyor belt. <laughs> and then the kindergarten teacher needs to get his bag. And then the confusion starts. So what is your first line of your scene? Got any ideas? Who do you want to speak first? What is something that they might say? And again, if it's a stinker, don't matter. We say yes. We say yes, yes, and yes. So go ahead and just try some stuff out. If you have a partner in the room that's game, and you say, okay, I'm Carl, I'm Captain Roberts, the salty sea captain. You're the kindergarten teacher. And I say to you, that's my bag, it has anchors on it. And then maybe your partner would say something like, um, that's my bag. It's from Macy's and it's obviously mine, uh, whatever. And then you would just build a scene with your partner and you can take turns saying lines. Whatever is a good nugget, you stick it into your journal, you write it down. And if it's a stink bomb, then you say, thank you, stink bomb, for teaching me that that was not what I was looking for. Ha ha, okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> Hmm, Nina Wilson is thinking. Or maybe she's like, hmm, I'm not sure about this. Um, so go ahead and uh, <gasps> the party is one of those musical bopper things as a peg leg. Good afternoon. Oh, I like that. That's a very nice way to start a scene. All right, these are fantastic. Cool. So here's what is going to happen. Did I mention this at the top? I am going to work on this scene, and I'm going to write this whole scene about Captain Roberts and Carl Roberts, the kindergarten teacher. I think that's funny. Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. I think it's funny. And how their bags get mixed up, and then the cat, the sea captain really wants all those treasures, that Play-Doh. Mm, so salty. Don't eat it. Um, I want you to work on your scene, and do me a favor. Get it kind of whittled down maybe to your, a page, maybe even just 10 lines, more if you want, but just maybe like a page of two characters just going back and forth under these circumstances and send it to me. I would love that so much. We have a hashtag, a hash brown thing. Hashtag, um, there it is. Hashtag Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. So, if you write your script and you can take a picture of it, you can hashtag it there, Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. But I think you have to do it to Instagram. I don't understand why. I don't understand what a hashtag is, uh, but I just think it has to go to Instagram. So please um, work on these scripts, send them to me. I would love to read some live next time I'm on air. I'd love to do a dramatic reading of your work. Nothing would please me more. My birthday is not till August, but I take it as a present now. Um, and then I'm also gonna be working on my scene. And then when we come back live, we can figure out how can we tell our scene maybe by ourselves. Maybe we just have one piece of costume. Hey, oh, oh, the man's not meant for the sea or the air. That's gonna make me laugh. So we can figure out how we can tell our scenes, how we can share our scenes by ourselves, just using one costume piece maybe. Um, so that'll be our next live session together. But in the meantime, please send me those scripts. I think they're up there, maybe. That's the cha-cha. Send it to there. Um, or I guess if it's not too long, you could put it in the comments. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe you could just cut base and put it in the comments. I don't know. I didn't say that, but try it. Okay, so uh, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, on Monday, we are back with one of the most delightful human beings I know, Ms. Deb, who's gonna do a choreography workshop. So I hope you come back at 2 p.m. on Monday. Um, yeah, other than that, I had a great time. Thank you so much for playing my scene writers. I can't wait to read these scenes. My friend Curtis will now delicately play me off with Mr. Damien's sweet, sweet tooth. Hoy crabs! <laughs> it's a, it's a scene theme. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. <laughs>